I sat in our first apartment, Abby and I's first apartment. I was on the couch. She was back in the bathroom. And I sat with my head in my hands in complete disbelief and fear. All that was about to happen was going to change absolutely everything in our life. Abby came out of the bathroom, walked into the living room where I was on the couch with my head in my hands, and she had a test in her hand, and it said positive. Nine months and four days later, I walk out of the birth center room, and I see my mother. At that point, I lose it. But these were tears of joy. But not just because my baby boy had been born, but because I had this newfound obedience, this newfound understanding that God had instantaneously given me in that moment. And until they had put him in my arms, I really didn't think I was ready. I, re I was like, no, there's no way. Abby, can I test? I was freaking out that day on the couch in our apartment. I was like, we're not ready. This is not happening no, no, no. But that moment they put him in my arms, that light bulb went on. And the struggles are real. If you're a parent, the struggles are real. Can I get an amen? It's apparent in the lives of all of my children, not just my oldest. And I know that I've been disobedient more times than I care to admit when it comes to what God desires of me as a father with Wren and continuing with Hope with Levi. And you know, I think I've been pretty obedient with Eden so far, but, you know, she's only going to be a year old. So I did realize, though, I couldn't live the same. It was that moment, that new understanding, that obedience to what God desired. I wasn't going to be able to live the same. I had in that moment to make a decision that I was going to come to the end of me. I was going to come to the end of me. And thankfully, I had this amazing model in my own father that I could follow. My dad is an incredible example, but I also have the guidance of Jesus and his word to, to take me there, too. This Christmas, we're going to be doing something a little different. This Christmas, I want to look at some of the practical ideas that we can learn from those who experienced the story of Jesus' birth firsthand. We're going to imagine Christmas from some different perspectives. And this morning, you know, I, I thought I was scared and I didn't know what I was going to do when I became a father. But this morning, I want us to imagine Christmas and just imagine, imagine what Joseph may have felt like when he found out that Mary was pregnant. At that point, they weren't even married. So in his mind, I can imagine Joseph thinking, did she cheat on me already? I, seriously? We're, I, that was quick. I, before even being a husband, I'm not so sure Joseph would win the award for the greatest fiancé as the scripture tells us that he was going to separate himself from her quietly because he wanted to at least keep some honor intact. But he was no superhero. But even though he wasn't a superhero, and even though it may not have looked like it was going to start out the best way that it could, the one thing we do know is that Scripture tells us that Joseph was a righteous man. And I know that word sometimes gets confused in definition, but if we look at the word righteous, righteous just means that he wanted to obey God. And we know that he did, and we know that it started right away. With Joseph, the obedience started right away. Look at Matthew 1, starting in verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man, or some say a righteous man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he'll save his people from their sins. 
Look at this. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife. So we know he was obedient to the call of God because he followed through with what was told to him in that dream by God. He married her, and they had the baby Jesus. Here's the thing about Joseph, though. He was a righteous man, so it didn't stop there. It couldn't stop there because there was so much more yet to come. Being the father, earthly father, of the Savior of the universe. Again, I thought I was scared. I can't even imagine what might have been going through his head. Joseph was on a constant learning curve when it came to the idea of obedience to God, no matter what may be asked of him. And Joseph would continue to discover this. And I think C.S. Lewis captures this idea great. He says this, obedience is the key that opens every door. Obedience is the key that opens every door. And I think Joseph was going to discover this as he continued to learn what obedience would mean to the call of God when it came to him. The next challenge that Matthew records for Joseph is this in chapter 2, verse 13. Now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Remain there until I tell you, for Herod's about to search for the child. He wants to destroy him. He rose, he took the child and his mother by night, departed for Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. Okay, it's clear Joseph has this understanding of obedience. Something's setting in. Something is understood in Joseph when it comes to the rules of, of obedience when the authority of God speaks. And so we kind of see some of these play out. I'd say the first rule Joseph understood is that obeying God doesn't always sound or feel practical, but we have to do it without delay. We don't question it. We don't sit around and decide whether or not we really want to do it. We do it without delay. And Joseph understood this. And it doesn't always sound real. It doesn't always sound practical. He comes to him a dream in the middle of the night and says, hey, you got to get up right now, pack your stuff, go to Egypt. Go to Egypt? They don't, even, they don't really like us over in Egypt. That's where you want me to go? Joseph didn't question this. He did what he was told. I think of my buddy Jeff years ago. They had a sloped driveway and his mother had parked the car, and she thought she'd put it in park, but she'd actually put it in neutral. And Jeff got out of the back seat, and he headed around to the back to open the trunk to get the stuff out from school and from groceries. And his mom took her foot off the brake and went to open the car door, and the car began to roll. And Jeff was behind it. And she screamed out for him to move. Thankfully, Jeff moved. <laughs> and he did it without delay. He didn't question why his mother wanted him to move. He didn't look up and go, why? What do I, what's going on? He just moved. He jumped out of the way. And thankfully, he did that without delay because otherwise, he probably would have ended up underneath the car. Jeff's mom, see, she saw what was happening before it was actually going to happen. She had this picture of what was about to occur, knowing that the car was in neutral and it began to roll. And he responded without delay. And it's just like, just like his mom saw that. That's kind of how it is with our obedience with God. See, God sees so much more than we can see, and he sees it before we see it. So that's why when he asks us to do something, when he claims our obedience to him in something, we do it without delay, even if it doesn't seem practical in the moment, because we know he has our back. He sees it, and he knows it before we do, so we can trust in him. The second thing that I think Joseph understood in obedience is that opening your life to the supernatural, opening yourself up to that authority of God, it allows your obedience to reach new dimensions that you may not have experienced under God. Pastor and author Kyle Item, and he kind of speaks to this rule and he says this, at the end of yourself, you have an opportunity to experience the presence of God in a way you never have before. Maybe you've embraced some wonderful things and lost them, but there's no embrace like the divine one. See, there's, there's a way that our obedience to God as we do it, opens up our eyes to more truth and more understanding of what it means to be blessed under that authority. And so as we grow in that knowledge, it raises that ability to be obedient to new levels. 
And it's under that supernatural experience. And look at this continuation that occurs, the dimensions that Joseph reached because of his obedience. But pay attention to the what and the how of how this occurs. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 19. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, he took the child and his mother, and he went back to the land of Israel. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. Any, any thoughts come to mind when you think through this process? See, I, I think Joseph had some very specific responses as he's growing and learning in his obedience, because we know the whole idea of believing without delay. You choose to obey without delay, and then he starts to connect in, and, and because he's constantly obedient, that line of communication opens up, so he begins to reach new levels. He received instruction in dreams. This was the first thing we see with Joseph. His instruction came in dreams. Now, I think God's going to speak to us in whatever way he can choose to get our attention He's going to do it through others. He's going to do it through experiences. He's going to do it through his words. Sometimes with me, it's safe, like kind of this figurative two by four to the head. Anybody ever had those moments where you're kind of sitting there and you realize you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and you just all of a sudden feel like you get knocked over by something? Multiple times in my life, it's that figurative two by four to the head, and he's going to do it no matter what. For Joseph, it was dreams. But also it's about being sensitive to that supernatural, to that authority that speaks to you and how he chooses to speak for you. You have to listen for that clear voice of truth. Joseph knew because of how it was coming, because he grew in that dimension of obedience. He knew in those dreams, he knew when that voice of God was speaking. But you've got to remember, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. A lot of times, though, it's about being quiet. I think this is one of the reasons why he went to him in dreams, because he was quiet. Nothing else was going on. So Joseph would hear and understand because it was quiet, that whisper, that still small voice. And obedience is difficult at times, but it comes so much easier when you know and acknowledge that that higher power is prompting you to do it. Being open to that authority, that supernatural voice that speaks into you, when you know that that's your prompter, it allows an easier road to that obedience. Obedience may not always be practical, practical us. It can open us to a new perspective. But finally, that third rule that really a lot of us don't like. This is the one that's painful that we don't want to agree to, that we want to battle with, and it's this. Obedience doesn't insulate us from life's hurts and fears. It doesn't insulate us, but it does protect us. Author and pastor Kyle Eidelman, he actually speaks to this rule too. I love this. So simple. Sometimes the rugged road is the only one to the best destination. Sometimes the rugged road is the only one to the best destination. We want to ask why all the time. We want to struggle with that question, with the hard questions as to why that, that difficulty has to occur for us to get through that. But I don't think there's a doubt that Joseph struggled with this idea. I don't think there's anything outside of clarity right here, that it wasn't that Joseph didn't struggle with the obedience, okay? Because there were hurts, there were fears in the process. In Matthew 2.22, but when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. There was fear there. This is Herod's son, Joseph was afraid when he heard that. He was afraid for his wife and for his child because who knows? Maybe Herod passed on the knowledge and said, hey, be on the lookout, okay? There may be a child, and if you find him and he claims that he is the king, okay, you got to destroy him. We don't want our family line losing this power. But in that situation, God still came through. He knew. He saw beforehand. He provided the way of protection for Joseph and Mary and Jesus. And Joseph, though, we saw earlier, Joseph, again, he was still obedient even in his fear because God provided that way out. He sent him back to Israel and said, no, Nazareth, you want to withdraw to Galilee, but here, you can do that, but go through Nazareth. I'm still protecting this. Don't worry. I got this. Sometimes obedience can be a difficult process. It can bring hurt. It can bring fear 
But by being obedient to the truth, it leads to a healing and a reward on the other side. I've talked about this before. It's that whole Rack, Shack, and Benny. Yeah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love it. These guys didn't, they didn't fade in their obedience either. And that's the thing is, is Joseph kept seeing on the other side of the obedience, even in the struggles of the, what seemed unpractical to what he was doing, there was always the answer on the other side. But what he didn't see is exactly what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't understand when they were obedient. It didn't matter what was going to happen. We're going to obey without delay. We're going to do exactly what God wants. We're going to trust in that higher power, that higher prompter to take us where we need to go. But it was the miracle that happened in the fire not what happened on the other side. It was what occurred in that time frame that actually allowed the reward on the other side. The obedience allowed the miracle to happen during that tough time. Again, it's not always practical. And it's not going to be a perspective that we're used to because our, our minds don't think that way because God's ways are different than our ways. His thoughts are different than our thoughts. We might be scared at times, but... Only good things can really come out of being obedient to that higher power and that higher prompter. When we're obedient to that, good things can happen. I, I bring to you again to recall the words of the great Charles Stanley as he spoke after 50 years of leading a church and was asked, what's your one greatest piece of advice? And he summed it up this way by saying, oh, that's easy. Obey God and leave the consequences to him. Obey God and leave the consequences to him. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to go to battle alone. We just have to be obedient to what God calls us to do. Applying that is a must in our lives. What might change in our lives today, in, in my life, in your life, in our, our life, if we choose to obey God fully in what he's asking us to do? If, like Joseph, we don't question, we just do. Maybe you could ask yourself today, what is he asking of you today in this moment? Or what might he ask of you this week to be in obedience to him about? Is it something in marriage, in, in job, in attitude? Maybe just your outlook in life in general in this Christmas season. For me, I, I'd like to be obedient to my Heavenly Father, as Joseph was, so that my son will be able to see in me and desire the same as he grows. That my children will see that above all, I desire obedience to God and his word and what he asks of me. And so that that example will then shine a light into their lives and they will follow the same. I'm going to change it up here a second. I told you I was scared in that moment. And God decided to teach me my own lesson, I guess, in the process of having my son. And the lesson he taught me, he, he put it in song for me. And I'd like to share that with you guys today. Because for me, this, this captures the lesson that he taught my heart. And so I'm excited to share this with you today. This is called a father's prayer. In this moment, it's hard to comprehend. My heart is pounding, and I don't think that I can stand. What is this feeling? Lord, what am I to do with this child that I'm holding? This precious gift from you, and it took me by surprise. Emotion that I've never felt before. God, you opened up my eyes. 
Uncovering your love and so much more In a single moment You've taken all my fear With arms wide open You have met me here I can't do this alone I'll be your will be done Lord, please make me father that is worthy of my son. On my knees, these things I must pray. And as he grows, give me patience every day. Guide me by wisdom to teach him in your way. So he will follow after you, God, and give his life to you in praise. And you take me by surprise. Emotions that I've never felt before. Lord, you open up my eyes. Uncovering your love and so much more. In all those moments, you take away my fear With arms wide open, Lord, I know that you're there Knowing I'm not alone and that your will is done So that I'll be Father That is worthy of my son I pray, Lord, that as my boy becomes a man, that he would understand his purpose, he would understand your plan. When that day comes, and a father he will be, let him rest in your promise, the same you gave to me. That you'll take him by surprise Emotion that he's never felt before Lord, you'll open up his eyes Uncovering your love and so much more And in that moment You'll take away his fear arms wide open Lord let him know you're there and Lord when I am gone and your will has been done let him know that his father is so proud of his son out of my kids not seeing my obedience to God kills me. This is the next generation. This is the generation we're counting on to carry on the work of the church and the mission of Jesus Christ. It's our job to pour into them. And one of the best ways we can do that is to exemplify the obedience that we desire in them before God. Imagine this morning, imagine. Imagine what it was like to be Joseph and to be obedient to what he was called to do to protect the son of the living God. Pray with me. Father, I pray, I pray for strength within us. I also pray for a quiet. 
so that your voice may enter to our hearts and our minds for us to hear, to know, and to understand. That whatever it is that we may be dealing with right now, whatever it is that we may be struggling with in our lives, that you would reveal that to us where we need to be obedient, where we need to change something, where we need to do something that you're calling us to do. pray that we would listen for that still small voice to open ourselves up to it, that we would then respond without delay. And that even if it doesn't seem practical and we're afraid of what it may be being asked of us, that we know it's coming from you and so we can trust it. Thank you, Father, for the incredible gift of your son this season. The ultimate blessing. An example to us of ultimate obedience. And Father, this morning, as we prepare to leave this place and to go back into our lives, help us each and every day to seek you first. If we do that, we open ourselves up to that dimension that helps us be obedient on a new level. And may we start that in this moment as together we choose to pray in the words that you have given us as a church family and as a body of believers together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.